everybody. It's Rob Shapiro from In the Mind Of. Um, I'm the clinical director of uh, ex education and professional physical therapy. With me today is Frank Hefner. Frank is the, the director of our, our residency program. And today we're going to kind of find out what is a residency program and, you know, why should we do it? Welcome, Frank. You know, Thank glad you. to have you. And uh, tell us a little about what, is the, what does a residency program mean? So a uh, residency program, uh, these are accredited programs by the APTA. So they have these uh, accredited residency programs set up in the different areas of practice, you know, orthopedic, sports, uh, neurology, uh, pediatrics, you know, all the different uh, specialty fields, you know, have these uh, accredited residency programs that are geared towards preparing you to sit for a specialty exam, the board exams for, you know, the, the different specialty areas. So we have an, uh, an accredited orthopedic residency program that prepares you to sit for the orthopedic clinical specialist exam, the OCS exam. First thing is how do I, all this interesting stuff, but how do I apply, how do I even get into involved in it? How do I apply to it? All right, so there's a, um, an RFPT CAS uh, website. That's what all of the applications are done electronically. It's similar to when uh, most people these days applied for a physical therapy school uh, with the CAS system. So there's an, a residency fellowship CAS system that you need to uh, apply through and send out your applications to the different residency programs. So our orthopedic residency program uh, is on that site and that's how you would apply. Is it a rolling admission or I have to have it by a certain date or deadline? So we start the admissions process in the beginning of the year. And the I, as of right now, uh, this being uh, January, the application site is now open. And we accept applications until March 31st. And then after that is when we start the interview process. Do I have to have experience? Am I new? Do I, you know, when can I do it? So you just need to be uh, a licensed physical therapist at the start of the program. So the program starts in August of each year. Uh, so you need to be a licensed physical therapist by that time. Uh, you don't need to have uh, any experience. Um, some people do a residency program right out of school. Uh, others do it after a few years of practice and realizing they want to specialize in a certain area. Um, both uh, applications are accepted. I could do from experience. So I, I waited, honestly, 10 years to go to a residency, and I wish I did it right out of school. Do you have a thought process right out of school? Do you have an experience? Does it matter? I, I don't. I, I think uh, whenever it's really what's right uh, for, for the person. Some people know exactly what they want to do right out of physical therapy school. Others want to work for a little while and kind of see what's out there. I don't think there's a right or wrong way. I think it's whatever's right for the person, and when they're ready to do it, they're ready. Can I just apply and start, or do I have to sort of process? So you you apply th through the RFPT CAS. You know the link is on our um, on our company website with the residency page. There's a link to the RFPT CAS site to apply, and then in April we'll do interviews. Uh, to then see uh, which uh, you know applicants would make good residents, and then you know get our answers out in the spring. And again, the program starts each August. So let's say I get into your program, and then what is what's the day in the life of for a resident? Uh, it's it's busy. Uh, you know, any residency program you know is again it's a, a 13 month program. You know where you're specializing in the field of orthopedic physical therapy. So. With our program, you're treating as a full-time clinician with our company. And in addition to that, you're going through the didactic curriculum, which uh, the bulk of that curriculum is done in five three-day modules that, that we teach. Uh, and then in addition to that, there are some additional lectures in the second half of the year and labs, uh, more on post-operative care. Uh, throughout the 13 months, you're getting mentored by an OCS clinician. Uh, the mentoring is three hours a week. Uh, you need to achieve at least 150 hours. That's the accredited requirement. Um, we're also doing uh, grand rounds with our residents. So they're doing case presentations on their current patients. So they're doing those twice a month and they're doing a monthly journal club. So it's a busy 13 months for the residents.
how about teaching for us? Are they doing any helping us teach at all? Yes, so they're, they are helping us teach. Uh, some of the residents, uh, there's two tracks as far as teaching. You can teach with MYIT, that they have a few spots where you're teaching in their gross anatomy, manual one and manual two courses. Um, and then the other residents are teaching with us in our clinical excellence department, and we have them, you know, teaching our clinical excellence mentoring program, you know, so the 12-week curriculum that our novice clinicians go through, we have our residents, you know, teaching that with us. Do we find out, are, are their outcomes any better? Is there a benefit to being a, a resident? Uh, their outcomes are better. You know, we, we look at their, we utilize a uh, photo in our company uh, as far as looking at patient outcomes and the residents have better patient outcomes, right, when, when we look at those. Um, so, you know, there's definitely something to learning, you know, there's guidelines based care and, and the, the care that they're providing, they are able to achieve better patient outcomes. Um, and, you know, why is that, you know, why is that important? Well, you know, in, in things that we've been kind of discussing uh, more recently and, and with value-based healthcare, you know, achieving good patient outcomes and being able to get patients better and get them better faster, that is becoming crucial in this day and age. And with uh, dealing with our, our, our payers and the insurance companies, they're looking at this data. And they want to see us being able to get, you know, good patient outcomes and that their money is being well spent. Now, last question, is, is there a typical person who's a resident? I think it's anybody that's just really motivated and is ready to learn. Um, though they make the best residents, the ones that are just willing to put the work in uh, for the 13 months. You know, this isn't a... This isn't the year to, to be going on vacations or to be traveling the world. Um, this is a year, you know, where you're really committing to yourself to the profession and to learning how to be the best in, in orthopedics. Mm -hmm. And that, that's really the type of person that's just really motivated to do that. They're going to do really well. I agree. So probably for me, professionally, it's probably the best thing I ever did for myself because you get pushed a little bit more than you would in everyday life. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate it. Thank and you. And it's uh, Rob Shapiro from In the Mind Of. Thanks for joining us.